Hello everyone and welcome back. I literally just got home from the tent about an hour ago. I actually knocked off. I was going to come home in the morning and came home this afternoon. Starter went out in the King Ranch. That's another reason why I came back because Melissa drives that when the snow is real bad. I took the white truck up today to the tent, or not today but yesterday. So I need to get a new starter. I came back and did the starter test on it and it's out. Well, it's a couple minutes after nine o'clock, still snowing out. Be interesting to see a few days from now just how many inches we get out of these systems that are coming through. Wood boiler is still working flawlessly. Except for that first time I started it and then it went out because I didn't know what I was doing uh, the fire has never went out now and that was in was that it must have been October almost six months so I don't know five six months has been running <laughs> Good morning everybody. That first wave of storm came through. Probably dropped like three inches, maybe two inches. It's warm though. It's like 29 or 30 degrees. So it's going to get up I think above freezing today. It's going to get really windy. Oh, well, it's about a quarter to eight in the evening now. This is how it's been. There's still supposed to be three inches of snow coming overnight tonight. But it has just been windy. They're saying gusts over 50. getting more and more windy. It's supposed to all die down by about one o'clock in the morning. That's weird. I've never seen a plane fly in that direction before. Change it out, Melissa's uh, this front wheel bearing hub. <laughs> Definitely what was making noise for her yesterday. I'm gonna run up and see if I can get a the part I need for that. So I got that to put in, the wheel bearing, the starter to put in, the King Ranch, and a brake line on the tan truck. Always start with the wife, the girlfriend, or whatever his vehicle. <laughs> They had one in stock, so I've got the part I need. 
And then since I was here, I decided I might as well stop and get some beer. I don't know how much I've got at the house, but never can have too much beer on hand. When I drove up, Melissa popped her head out and said she's just about to start cooking the eggs, so that means that it's almost lunchtime. Oh, I'm glad to have that done because when I was tightening the back bolts and you're cranking down, you know, there's probably this much ice on the driveway right now. And I've got a piece of plywood sitting on ice with the jack on top of it on a day that now is above freezing and you can see that it's starting to melt. So it just got a little bit scary there. Let's take her out for a test drive. When she was talking to me on her phone with her earpiece in, I could clearly hear how loud the truck was when she was driving home from work yesterday. Runs like a new truck now. Next up will be the starter on the black diesel, but I'm not going to start that today because everything is sloppy wet under it now. I thought before, okay, I'll clear that snow out in front of the garage over there, and then I can just, you know, the truck won't fit in the garage, but I could get the nose of it in there so I'd be on concrete. And then I remembered it's the starter doesn't run. <laughs> There's no way I can move the truck. Maybe tomorrow morning I'll come out here when it's cold. I'd like to have that done before Tuesday because that's when the big snow is coming. Last I looked it's still, now it said 13 inches. I just went out and filled up the boiler. Still had quite a bit of wood in it. It was a warm day. Tomorrow's supposed to get to 44. I filled it up enough so it'll burn for a full 24 hours, but I have to cut wood tomorrow. So I'll get started on the diesel truck, cut some wood tomorrow. Tonight we watched, well, part of Sven Gulli, but ah, uh, not my favorite. It had Abbott and Costello in it, and I just can't stand them. So I was mainly editing the tent video. Almost time for bed. Clear skies. Snowstorm is still coming and now it's showing 13 inches.
Good morning, everybody. I can tell you this starter sucks. Two bolts came out real easy, but there's one up on top. You got to have a extension. In there. I don't know. I mean, I can see getting it out, but I don't know how the heck you get it back in. I got the starter out, and that was so frustrating. But anyway, it's out, and you can clearly see that it's fried. There's like a wire that goes between the solenoid and the starter that's completely looks like somebody hit it with a welder and just burnt it right out. So, and then I called up and I'm gonna get a new one. Yeah, I'm going to get it right now. I have a feeling that the roads are gonna be not starting to melt, but otherwise they're just, you can see they're just pure ice. That snowstorm that's coming up in two days now, it was at 12 or 14 inches, now we're down to just eight inches. Two things that I miss that the uh, King Ranch has versus this truck. Uh, this one doesn't have heated mirrors, so now there's ice on the mirrors and I can't really see out of them. And the other thing is the King Ranch has a thing that tells the temperature outside. Well, I picked up the starter and then I went into Super One and got some Jack's pizzas for lunch.
now that I'm getting rid of this bigger stuff, now I got all this easy small stuff underneath that I can cut up. Got a few days worth of wood there. I'll probably come out, if it's frozen tomorrow morning, I'll probably come out and cut a little bit more. <laughs> Try to stay out of the lake. Oh, I decided since the snowmobile is down, I talked to my Uncle Richard who knows, my Uncle Matt knows everything there is to know about small engines and my Uncle Richard knows everything there is to know about snowmobiles. So uh, he thinks that something is stuck in one of the carburetors and it's shooting gas into the crankcase or whatever because I had gas that came out of the, uh, the exhaust pipe. And I don't have time to monkey with it right now, but I wanted to come out. I can kind of walk on the snowmobile trail. When I was in the field, I fell through a little bit, but I wanted to see if we have any sap running. It does not look like anything is running yet. I looked at my, I've got this, oh, it's called Sap Tap Apps or something like that, but it's, um, it's not on your phone, it's on your computer. And there's people that have tapped up here, no information. There was one that was over by Leech Lake, which they're a little bit more north, and I mean a couple hours west, but uh, they had collected like, they had 32 taps out, I think, and had only collected just a very little bit. So I thought I'll check this one, run down and check the next one. I'm not gonna do the whole loop because I know I'm gonna fall through up to my knees. Just make sure that not anything is running and I need to put my snowshoes on and uh, grab a sled, start collecting. No, well, it clearly looks to me like there is nothing going. I'm kind of glad about that. Maybe I'll get a chance to look at the snowmobile, but you know, yesterday I had Melissa's truck, today I had uh, the black truck and I had to cut wood, so we're still good. I'm not falling behind on anything. Never needed to cut into that 12 cord right there, but I'm glad I had it just in case. It's been a long winter, so I'll have a pretty good idea of how much wood that boiler burns after this season for sure. Yeah, he had me open up the hood and take out the spark plugs and look at them real close to see if there was any aluminum shavings or, you know, any little metal shavings or specks on there, and there wasn't. And then he had a word for what you do with the clutch. Anyway, basically turn the motor over uh, using the clutch pulley and see if compression seemed the same in both cylinders, and it did. So then I tried to turn it over with the starter after I put everything, you know, back in there and it would go like rrr, 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 and stop. Turn off the key, do it again, it would do it again. And then it did it again. And then the fourth time it's like it powered through where it stopped and kept turning over and then I just stopped. And then underneath here somewhere, fuel just came running out because what we noticed after I stopped it here, you know, and it wouldn't start. There was a small puddle of fuel underneath it. And then as time went on, it seemed like there was more of it. So Richard said there's something in one of the carbs probably that's keeping the float or I don't know what word he used. I don't know if it was a float or not. Anyway, it's pumping gas into the crankcase and then just pushing it through here when I turn it over like that. So. I need to figure out what it is. I might have to have Zach help me out with the carburetors or something. And then, you know, I mean, otherwise the thing is run great. It's not like I beat on the thing, that's for sure. Probably needs to be beat on more. Probably won't have any trouble then. Look at that mess. It's messy, but that means spring is trying to get here. Not sure if you can see it, but right. Let me see if I can on this side of the axle from the shock, on the other side, when I push in the brake, it leaks a little bit right where it like connects. There's a little connector there. When I was at the auto parts store today, 
I asked him if they had that and he goes, no, they don't have any pre-made ones. I'd have to bring in the old one and they could make one. I know I can order it online, but it's just getting the, I don't know how it's going to be trying to take off brake lines that are 22 years old. <laughs> I can just see more problems happening than it's needed. I'm not going to end this video tonight. Normally I would end it when I bring down the garbage can, but like I said in the beginning, I wasn't even going to do a video right now because I have one that went up today on the tapping the maple trees and I'm editing the one for the winter trip to the tent. And we're going to run this one through for two more days and see what happens with that storm. It's went from, now it's down to six inches. So we'll see. Maybe we'll get lucky and we won't get hardly anything. Melt this snow and let's see some grass. Good morning, everybody. I was out here a couple hours ago, started the stove up for my dad because he's going to come up and work on his gun case today. And I'm going to cut some more wood this morning. This winter storm that's coming, you know, it was going to be like 14 inches of snow, 12 inches of snow, you know, kept changing around. And now what's happening is the snowy part is going up, is more north. The rain is down south and we're caught in the middle. So we're still in a three to six inch range for snow, but now it has switched to a quarter to a third of an inch of ice and then a winds that are going to be gusting up over 60 miles an hour. So that's just a prime, whatever you want to call it, for power outage when you get the ice on the power lines and then it gets real windy or the trees and they fall down. So I definitely want to make sure I have enough fuel for the generator and yeah, today it's going to be sunny. Yesterday got to uh, 40, well, you were out there when I was doing the truck though. It did get to the total, the maximum high yesterday was 46 degrees. It was like, wow. So now today it's supposed to get to like, I think 40, 42 or something. So it's going to be nice. Sun's kind of out right now. There's some light flurries coming, but then tomorrow is when it's all going to change. I'm going to sharpen up my small chainsaw, the blade. And I want to get out there and cut. Now that I've got that bigger stuff cut on top, there's some smaller stuff on that left side. I'd like to get that cut out right now because it's getting to be really soupy there. You guys saw that. And so if I can cut some of this, the ground here, it'll get real soupy like that. And it doesn't take long because it's sand. And then boom, it's gone. And then you can go through there. It's not like when it's clay. But uh, when that's going to happen, I'm not sure. And there's a ton of snow to melt that's going to keep filling that in. In the basement where the sump pump is, it's still dry. So we're getting all of the snow melt, but the ground is still frozen and it's not going to be long until it starts working its way down and then things will dry up here. After the snowstorm, we have a day or two of kind of chillier weather, 30, 32, I think there's a 27 in there for highs. And then there's like three, four days, they're going to be in the upper 40s, I think. I can't remember if I saw a 50 in there too. So, yeah, then we're going to hear about the rivers flooding and stuff like that. But spring is on the way. I'm going to get this sharpened up so I can get some wood cut this morning before everything gets too soupy. The people that complain on the channel that all I ever talk about is the weather, <laughs> you're going to be loving this video. It's the only reason I even made the video is because of this storm coming. And uh, <laughs> it keeps changing. Make me up another batch of fuel. Melissa finally told me last night that I need to go in and get a haircut. The whole winter she's been telling me how she likes my hair so I haven't got it cut. <laughs> and last night she finally said you need to get it cut. I'm not even going to check the oil, I just know it needs a cord. I could tell by the where the oil pressure was yesterday when I was using it. When it gets down and starts popping around 20, 
I know it needs a quart of oil. Melissa was going to make a big batch of jambalaya tonight, and yesterday I took a pork roast out of the freezer from the garage, and then she did a Walmart pickup and picked up everything else she needed. Anyway, she got here and started to cut up this roast, and she said she can't use it. You have to have a lean roast for making jambalaya, so she'll pick one up tomorrow, but I said I'm not... Uh, I'm gonna let this go to waste. This is great stuff on the barbecue. So I fired up the grill and cooking it up. I did come out here earlier and cut up a bunch more wood and got it over here. That storm is still coming. It just it sounds like it's gonna be more of an ice and a wind event, but <laughs> it's gonna come tomorrow. Just filled up the boiler. Be going to bed probably in about an hour. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Well, this morning the snow started about, I'd say, 10 o'clock, and that wind is just whipping. And this is not the windy part of the day, that's going to happen later on. Now they're saying four inches of snow, then ice, and a lot of wind. So, so I was sitting there and it was really blowing this morning. And I thought, you know what, the new fish house, the wheelhouse, uh, how does that get covered by insurance? I know if you're pulling it down the road with your vehicle, your vehicle will cover it just like any other trailer. So then I called them up and if, because I'm worried, you know, where it's parked, what if a tree blows down on it? <laughs> so I called up and got coverage put on that. And uh, it was interesting because if you have it out on the lake and you're fishing, and it falls through the ice, they cover the amount you insured it for, the, but they don't pay for the tow charge of getting it pulled out of the lake. I thought once you were on the ice, you were on your own. It, it, it just nothing got covered, but nope, they do cover it. He said if it went into the, to the bottom of the lake, uh, the fish house is covered, but not getting it out. We'll just keep following this storm and see what happens. It's about 5.30 at night now. Melissa just got home from work. The roads were horrible. She said they were doing about 25 miles on the freeway or the interstate. Well, it's 8.45 and it's still windy. I'm, we'll stick our head out there in a minute. Zachary and Samantha, they lost power at 3.30 this afternoon. And uh, we haven't lost it yet, but the, the ice and stuff isn't supposed to start until I think around midnight, one o'clock when everything will start getting coated. You'll be sitting there, we were just watching, a. there's some Brooke Shields, uh, I finished editing the tent video where Melissa's watching the Brooke Shields documentary, which is really, really good. And all of a sudden the house will just creak when the wind blasts against the, it's coming out of the, that must be coming out of the south now. That's the side of the house it's hitting. Well, it's 9.30 at night, I'm going to run out there and fill up the boiler. 
I'm gonna bring you out there with me, but I'm gonna make the tripod really short because you're gonna blow right over otherwise. Well, I got it all filled up for the night. That wind is brutal out there. Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, my dad's coming out to use the workshop tomorrow, so I'm going to turn the heat up out here. <laughs> There's nowhere to talk outside with all the wind. Uh, that storm came through, you know, last night it was so windy, and uh, Brandon, who stays in one of the upstairs bedrooms, he said it sounded like the roof was going to blow off the house. I actually woke up at, it was about 3.45 in the morning, and um, the, fl the power like, you know, in the bedroom, the light from the, the one that's on the outside of the garage, it kind of lights up part of the bedroom, and I, I don't know why I woke up, but I woke up, maybe it just got really windy, but it, uh, the light flickered a couple of times. I could hear it in the fan in the bedroom, too. And then maybe, like, it flickered, and then 30 seconds went by and it did it again. And then about a minute went by and it did it again, and I thought for sure the power was going to go out. I was ready to get up, put my warm clothes on, and go out and start the generator, but it never did. Zachary up in Silver Bay, Minnesota, they lost power at about 3.30 yesterday afternoon, but they had it back on, I think it was by like 8.30 or 8.10, something like that. He told me it came back on. So uh, this morning when I woke up, it was... The wind had died down some, and it was misty rain, so there was getting ice on everything, just like they said. The storm itself kind of flopped as far as how much snow was going to fall, uh, but I don't really know how much, because when it's that windy, where does that snow go? And it did get icy, and then it was like calm. And, uh, and yesterday the wind was coming whatever direction, anyway, it was calm. And then what happened is I read it from the National Weather Service. Uh, we were like, it was almost like an on-land hurricane. You know, all the lines were real tight in the circle, and we were like in the eye of the low-pressure system. And then that went through, and then the wind came from the other direction, and it's just been howling out there this afternoon. Melissa and I had to run some cats in to the vet for a checkup, and... Uh, so I grabbed him and we went down there, and man, it was blowing that bridge going over Lake Superior from Minnesota to Superior, Wisconsin. Was It was really blowing. And I think now this is going to kind of die down and we're going to be done, and you're not going to believe this. I don't think we've seen 50 degrees here in, I don't know, five months. I don't know. It's been a long time. Next Wednesday, according to my phone, it's forecast to be 65 degrees, you know, above zero. So then we're going to go from all these storms, then the big uh, story on the news is going to be the rivers are flooding because everything is going to melt so fast. But we have like a couple of upper 40s and then 50s, but there was like a 59 and a 65. And then I think it drops down somewhat. But So anyway, I don't know what the next video is going to be like, but it's uh, hopefully not going to be another snowstorm. Melissa and I on the weekends will spend time out in the fish house. Uh, we watched a movie out there and we've just been getting stuff ready like uh, ordered a like a pillow top thing for the mattress and a heated mattress 
blanket, uh, just different stuff like that. So we'll go out there and spend a couple hours out there on the weekends. So I switched the tanks out because I'm only using the forced air furnace. So that's what I was just doing out there, taking the full tanks that were on the left and uh, putting them over on the right side to run the furnace. Look at that wind blowing that snow. I will see you guys on the next video.